Now, the U.S. is due to announce the biggest ever military aid package to any country. Israel is to receive $38 billion worth of weaponry in the 10-year deal. It includes $500 million a year for Israeli missile defense until now financed on an ad hoc basis by the U.S. Congress. The agreement will also gradually phase out Israel's ability to spend AIDS money on its own defense industries instead of U.S. military hardware. Imran Khan has more from Jerusalem. The reaction here to this landmark deal can really be divided into two. There are those that say that this is the best deal that Israel could get, that it's a landmark deal for Israel, that it's more than any other state has ever been pledged in history, and that given the U.S.'s financial position, it's something uh, that is, should be appreciated that the U.S. is sowing such support for Israel and for the state of Israel. There are detractors to this deal. They say that they could have been able to get more. Some $42 billion is a figure that's being bandied around. Uh, they say that if the relationship between uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Barack Obama wasn't so fraught, uh, that they would have been able to get more. There's also real concern that the money can only be spent on American military projects and American military hardware, that in previous agreements, Israel has been able to spend 25% on its own military development. So that's a, a concern. So you've got two real narratives coming out here. This is the best deal that we could have got, or we could have got a better deal if that relationship was you know, slightly better. However, the real uh, thing that both sides can agree on, both narratives are both saying, is that this sends a message to the rest of the region that Israel is the mil military superior to everybody else and this sends a message saying that America is firmly committed, despite public disagreements, is firmly committed to Israel's security. Well, joining me now.